This week, we are trying one of the newest wine varietals in the world. And in the tip of the week, we're gonna talk about what are the terms primary, secondary, and tertiary aromas mean? All of that, coming up next. Hello, and welcome to Wine This Week with Scott Leak. This week, we're reviewing the wine varietal Pinotage, which has a really unique distinction in that it is one of the newest wine varietals in the world. This was actually made in a laboratory in 1925, so less than 100 years ago, and it wasn't even bottled for the first time until about 1960. So it's a really young wine varietal in compared to you know a lot of the Italian or French wines that have been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Pinotage was actually developed in South Africa because they wanted to recreate what was so amazing about Pinot Noir, which we talked about last week, and at the same time make something that was hardy enough to grow and thrive in the South African climate. And what they ended up creating was a blend of Sanso, which I did an episode on that, I'll link it below, and Pinot Noir. And the funny thing is, it doesn't really taste like either one of those, but it did thrive in the South African climate. It is pretty much exclusively grown there. There are a few other countries in Africa that are doing Pinotage right now, but for the most part, at least here in the United States, you're not gonna find Pinotage from anywhere other than South Africa. And it used to be not all that well respected uh, here in, in the States. In the last few years though, it's become a lot more reliable and, and even growing a little bit in popularity. It is, unlike Pinot Noir, it is a much bolder, darker, uh, intense wine. It is something that is a lot more similar to Syrah than it is to Pinot Noir or uh, Sanso. Also, unlike Pinot Noir, Pinotage is often blended with other grapes, just like Cabernet can be or Merlot can be, and those are usually the two it's most often blended with. In South Africa, a lot of the wine growing regions are in the Western Cape. And so when they blend together Pinotage with some other varietals, they tend to be known as Cape blend. So if you ever do find a Cape blend, know that it's most likely Pinotage being mixed with Cabernet and or Merlot. Let's find out what this 100% Pinotage tastes like though. Today's wine is the Barista 2019 Pinotage from South Africa. This comes in at 13% alcohol, cost me 18 bucks. When I poured this just now, the color really stood out. Just coming through, being poured in the glass, it was really beautiful. I know I say that about pretty much everything, but love the color on this one. I'm gonna say that this is pretty much a, I'm gonna go deep uh, ruby on this. It's not, eh, I don't know. This is a tough call between ruby and garnet. Either deep ruby or medium garnet, but somewhere in that range. I haven't quite smelled it yet, but, uh, Nope, now I can smell it. And I'm really like anxious to get this to my nose because there's there's enough coming through and I haven't even got it within a foot of my face yet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Um, first thing I smelled was coffee. Uh, like undeniable. This has got like maybe even more so than like a cup of coffee, like this smells like freshly roasted coffee beans. Wow, that's really interesting. There's a little chocolate coming through as well. And I know this sounds funny, but if you've ever been in a dispensary, it kind of smells a little bit like that smells too. Man, I've never smelled a wine that has that component. That's the first time I've ever used that description. This is so interesting. So there is, you know, to kind of go along those lines, maybe a little tobacco coming through. And I'd even say like tar, which might sound weird, but it isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm, I'm digging the smell on this thing. There's not a ton of fruit coming through though, but definitely black fruits. But man, that, that roasted coffee is really pronounced. Let's give it a taste. That is different. Not bad. This is unique. Again, this is the first time I've ever had a Pinotage. Ooh, that's juicy. 
It's not bone dry. I'm gonna call this off dry, so on like a one to five scale. We'll call it medium low on the, um, on the acidity. Tannins aren't terribly uh, pronounced. I'm gonna go medium on the tannins on this, which kind of surprised me. Number one, it's a 2019, so this is pretty young. Sometimes younger wines tend to be a little bit more intense in the, in the tannins. But I just kind of expected what I'd read and studied on this ahead of time that this might be more medium plus. But this one is definitely a medium on the tannins. Yeah. But yeah, that juiciness. Whew. I'm going medium plus on the acidity. It's not over the top. It's not crazy high, but... It's got that just, I really like the level of acidity on this. It's great. Um, as far as the alcohol goes, just a hint of burn, not much. This is coming in at 13% alcohol. So I'm going to go about medium on the alcohol and the finish is nice. Like this has got a good lengthy finish. And again, with that coffee component, I mean, if, if you've ever had a cup of coffee, which most people have, you can taste the coffee for quite a while. Coffee tends to have a long finish. And this with the coffee components that are coming through on the palate is giving this a pretty long finish. So that's really interesting as well. Medium body, but the flavors are so cool. So the juiciness in some of the fruit is a lot more noticeable and, 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 uh, and just comes to the forefront more so than the coffee does, but the coffee is definitely there and that's pretty nice. I wouldn't really say I'm getting much in the sense of oak on this, um, but that coffee kind of tar, um, what else did I say? A little bit of tobacco, those are those are coming through. Maybe even some some really dark, like really dark cherry would be the most I would go in terms of the the fruits, but this is definitely a darker fruit. I could even go like a, a, a like a black plum. Just right there, taking that sip, I took a little inhale. I got that dispensary smell again. God, that's so funky. Oh, that's hilarious. So, yeah, this is this is good. Um, it's a fairly well balanced wine. Good length on the finish. The intensity of the aromas is probably more intense than the flavors, although the flavors are good. Like I'm, I'm enjoying this wine. I wouldn't say it's terribly complex. I'm not too surprised. It's under $20. It's a 2019. This is fairly young. So I wasn't really expecting it to come in with a whole lot of complexity, but it, there, there's enough different things going on, but it's all just kind of primary. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. It's all just kind of primary flavors coming through. Overall, uh, I'm gonna score this seven and a half points. This is a good, good wine. I'm gonna call this a very good value at $18. Um, I'm gonna have this with the steak tonight and mix it up a little bit instead of having you know my typical Bordeaux or, or Cabernet or Syrah with, um, with steak. So I would say this could be another thing that if you're at a steakhouse and you're trying to find a good value and you're looking for something different than a Bordeaux or a Cabernet or even an Australian Shiraz, I'm guessing if there's a pinotage on the menu, that is gonna be a really good value. And I think this is going to be a good choice that's gonna appease a lot of people. That coffee and that kind of almost smokiness that's coming through with this, that tar, the tobacco, I think would go great with game. This would probably be good with, with duck. Um, but yeah, any beef, any smoked meats, I think barbecue, this would go great with like, actually like wood smoked barbecue. There's enough of the components of this that I think would, would match up with that really nicely. So man, really impressed by this. Give Pinotage a try. For this week's tip of the week, I wanna talk about the terms primary, secondary, and tertiary when it comes to the aromas and flavors of a wine. So if you read about wine or listen to nerds like me geek out about it, you will possibly hear those terms. I did mention primary uh, when describing the, the flavors and aromas of this earlier. So I wanna talk about what those mean a little bit because they're really gonna come in handy in some videos coming up in the next few episodes. So. Primary flavors or primary aromas of a wine describe not necessarily what do you taste first, it's not what do you taste first, second, and third. Think of the actual winemaking process of first, second, third. So the primary flavors are the things that come about through the actual growing of the grapes, like what is inherent in the grapes themselves, 
what's present in the soil that's affecting the grapes, and then that initial fermentation of the wine as well are all the things that are gonna make up those primary flavors. The secondary flavors are everything that comes after fermentation all the way up to the aging process, and that's gonna be the third component. So to give you some examples of that, think of the primary flavors, again, what are coming from the grapes itself in the soil? So with red wines, they're gonna be those fruit flavors of you know, cherry or blackberry. It's gonna be floral notes or herbaceous notes. When it comes to white wines, again, those you know, lemon, lime, honeysuckle, those types of things. You're also gonna hear things like minerality in a white wine. That's something that's really coming from the soil. Sometimes you hear it talked about in red wines too, but those things that are gonna come from certain types of limestone and other soils are gonna come about through the grapes and, and be present in those primary flavors. The secondary flavors, that's your classic oak, vanilla, the things that come from the barrel and the process that occurs of the, of the wine before it's bottled or while it's, um, while it's finishing that, that process. So in a white wine, those things in a Chardonnay, the malolactic fermentation or malolactic conversion, as it's technically called, the butter, the cream, those types of flavors that are gonna come about like in a Chardonnay. And you know, again, the oak, cedar, vanilla in, in the red wine are the things that you're gonna notice in the secondary. The tertiary is gonna be the things that occur in the longer aging process of a wine. And those are really gonna come up in the next few episodes that I'm gonna do on port, on sautern, on sherry. So we get into the dessert wines, those tend to have more of those tertiary aromas. You can certainly have them in aged Cabernets, aged Barolos or, or Bordeaux as well, but those are gonna be the things where they, they actually affect some of the primary flavors and start to change them. So this is a very young wine, but if this were 20 years old, the fresh fruits that are coming from this might start to taste like dried fruits instead or cooked fruits. So when you hear someone say raisin or prune, so those kind of dried fruits, I've, I've had a white wine that I thought tasted like dried apricots more so than just a regular apricot. So those are some of the things that are result of the aging process. The coffee here is not from the aging process, but sometimes in dessert wines or aged wines, that coffee comes through mushroom, um, you know, uh, caramel and nut flavors and in white wines and in champagnes, you're gonna hear things like yeast and toast and petrol. So those are the things that are part of that tertiary process or the aging process of the wine. So wanted to put out this little tip of the week. Again, I think this is gonna come in handy that I talk about this now in advance of some of the videos that are coming up in the next few episodes. Thank you for watching another episode of Wine This Week. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, please like and subscribe. Join me next week as we move on to our first dessert wine of the series. We're gonna be talking about port. Until then, keep trying new wines, and as always, cheers.